Attack on Titan Season 4 is being welcomed with mixed reactions amongst fans, with WIT Studio handing over the animation to Studio MAPPA and a production of this series. Studio MAPPA is no rookie in the realm of animation, as they're also working on Juju Kaisen and God of High School. In fact, MAPPA took over because they were presumably the only studio that could handle the heavy workload of Attack on Titan Season 4, which is probably why they have implemented more CGI than usual in in this season. So much hype and excitement was brought to the final episode airing and simulcasting that it crashed Crunchyroll servers, which only happens during the most highly anticipated episodes of a popular series. Anyone remember the one hour Dragon Ball Super special? Fans were introduced to a brand new season four opening, met mostly with animosity, although some fans did appreciate that it didn't spoil anything for the season. The opening consisted of various colorful explosions over a gray landscape, symbolizing the destructive and bloodied wars to come in this arc. It was a very different opening than we're traditionally used to, which is met with high octane action, incredible animation, and heart pounding music. But the opening this time was very somber and somewhat depressing, which is what they were going for in this opening. Unsuspecting anime only fans were left scratching their heads at a cast of new characters, storylines, and even a new titan, the Lion Titan, as manga readers laughed in the background. Yep, there's plenty of memes already. There was some heavy complaints over the use of CGI, although Attack on Titan is no rookie in the realm of CGI. Using it in previous seasons, it appears that MAPPA will be using it slightly more than usual in the final season. Personally, I felt like the use of CG in the episode was masked very well, even being hard to tell it was CG in some instances, but others it was jarring to the eye, for example the heavily armored tank. The armored titan, for example, was mostly CG, but whatever their process is for applying certain and filters on top of the CG makes it really look like it's hand drawn and I can appreciate that. The end of season 3 left us with Aaron Yeager and company staring over the vastness of the sea, something that Armin and Aaron had promised each other they would see since the first season. Aaron said he will take the war over to Marley. But now, as we see a battle ensuing, we learn during this episode that it is indeed Marley, but they are fighting against the Mideast allied forces, using the power of the Titans to defeat their enemies. The Marleans are using the Elidians, those who control the power of the Titans, as suicide bombers. And you can see this animosity for Elidians, both sides of the war calling the Elidians devils. It was a very intense scene to watch as the Elidians strap grenades around their chests, getting ready to basically just charge in and die, but fortunately they were spared by the brave yet overconfident Gabby. As they're discussing options to get through the front gate of the Mideast Allied Forces base, Fort Slava, Commander Magath says that they must be very careful with their use of Titans and not expend their trump cards like they did nine years ago in their attempt to get the Founding Titan, losing the Colossal Titan and the Female Titan. This is the audience's first hint that, you guessed it, there's a time skip. The second hint is right after Gabby tells us that this war, the one that they are currently in, is the climax of four years of combat. We all see Reiner, the armor titan who for years worked behind enemy lines on Paradise Island as a double agent. Reiner, Zeke, and Emir were the only members of the elite Marleyan titan unit to make it back home. As we remember, they were all double agents over on Paradise Island trying to recover that founding titan. Annie was captured in season 1, while Berthold was taken down by Armin and Eren in season 3, with Armin eventually inheriting his power. When the time comes, Reiner and Zeke unleash their onslaught on Fort Slava with the help of the Lion Titan, Galliard. As the aged Reiner parachutes in, he says he's sick of walls as he slices his hand and transforms, giving him PTSD to the days of being a double agent on Paradise Island. But as we can see, military forces have started to learn how to kill the Titans. The age of the Titan is falling. Zeke, as he's falling, says that our defeat is what started this war, Reiner, referring to their losses against Aaron, Levi, and company on Paradise Island. Even so, Marley was able to clutch a victory, signing a peace deal with the Mideast allied forces. Now, if you're wondering where Aaron, Levi, and Mikasa are, you're going to have to sit tight for a while. Attack on Titan Season 4 will have 16 episodes, so we probably won't get to see Aaron and company until around Episode 5. Now, I don't want to get into major spoilers in this video, 
video, I mainly wanted to talk about my reaction to the first episode, fan reactions, and talk about how I think Studio Mappa has done in their takeover of the finale of this beloved anime, which we've all been hyped up and waiting for for so long. First of all, Studio Mappa is working on two other major anime at the moment, Juju Kaisen and God of High School, as well as I'm sure they're working on some others as well. They're an animation studio that's known to be able to take on mass workloads, and so for what we got under the circumstances, I was very impressed and very happy. First of all, the music when the Titans come in and they're starting to destroy the Mideast Allied forces, Reiner's running around destroying all these cannons and getting blasted by them. It was dramatic, it was astounding to see the armored Titan get so easily pierced and blown up, but at the same time, it was extremely exciting. I know the beginning started off slow, but they're trying to do some more world building because we haven't seen really what happens over the sea. We've only really, as viewers, been exposed to Paris. Paradise Island, and now we're getting to start to see what's happening on the rest of the world. So they have to spend some time to build this up. As the final assault begins with the blimp flying over the fort, and they launch all of the Titans out who fall to the ground, Zeke lets out a roar, which transforms that group of humans that they launched out into mindless Titans. Half of them die on impact, but they use them as kind of like a suicide Titan bombing, which was incredibly epic. Half of those Titans get up and start to eat people. As fans, that's what we've come here to see. We love to see Titans eat people. That's what made us fall in love with this series in the first place as we were introduced to that in the very first episode of Attack on Titan. I think they did an excellent job depicting the fear of the fighters on both sides of the war, particularly the Mideast Allied forces. You can kind of feel for them as you imagine. You have this fort, this stronghold with all of this militia and artillery, and they're getting bombed by Titans who are eating their friends and their allies. You can see and sense the fear of these characters, and I absolutely loved it. Now, in terms of the CGI, it really wasn't a huge deal for me in particular. I'm just wondering how much more they're going to use. Typically, the first episode is a fairly good depiction of how much CG they're going to use throughout the season, and I'm estimating that however much we saw in this first episode, we will see the same amount or more in future episodes. And I know how anime fans are. They're very particular when it comes to CG. I feel like the original Attack on Titan seasons were able to get away with it because they used so little and did a great job at kind of masking it. Yes, it was more prevalent here in this season. It didn't really bother me too much yet, but I think it's really going to depend how much more we see in the future. A lot of fans think that the use of CG can make or break an anime, so we'll have to give it a few episodes to see, but it's not really a great sign. But again, with the circumstances that Studio Mappa is under, I can understand it. And again, I think they did a really good job of masking it with whatever filters that they're using. This is becoming a more widely used technique where they're trying to separate the jarringness of CG by kind of like masking it with an anime filter so that it's hard to tell in some instances. This is something that Studio Ufotable is probably the best at. If you take a look at Demon Slayer, they use a lot of CG, but they mask it so well that you really can't even tell if it's CG or, or actual 2D hand-drawn animation in most of the instances. So in this Attack on Titan final season, we're going to get a lot of our questions answered. In fact, most of them will be answered as we explore over the sea and we get to find out all about the Marleans, the Illidians being used as the Titans as basically tools of war. Now, one thing I'm a little concerned about and I don't have the answer for, but maybe one of you guys does down in the comments below, you can let me know is the manga is not done yet. It's very clearly entering the climax of the series and probably could end in a few chapters or so. But because the manga is not done yet, who is writing the anime ending? And is it going to be different than the manga? Are we going to get something like Game of Thrones where the show got ahead of the story uh, from the original author and then they kind of had creative freedom to end the story on their own? I'm not 100% sure about that. So if they've done any announcement on that, let me know in the comments down below. But that could lead us to two different endings which can really separate fans. Overall, I think we just have to sit tight and enjoy the series for what it is. Enjoy Attack on Titan Season 4 even being finished. If you remember, the wait between Season 1 and season two was like four years long so I'm just happy they've gotten to season four so quickly regardless of changing studio we're actually going to get the end of an anime one that's beloved by fans and I mean I think that's exciting but I'm really hoping that MAPPA even though they're probably one of the best studios under pressure they can maintain their fortitude as we're getting 16 episodes in a relatively short amount of time.
I was happy with episode one. I didn't have any major complaints, and I'm really excited for episode two. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm Mastar. Subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.